In this update, Hurricane Fiona remains a very powerful Category 3 hurricane with 115 mile an hour winds. I am also keeping an eye on Invest 98L as it heads towards the southern windward islands into the eastern Caribbean, and this has a big potential of becoming our next name storm. Welcome back to Weather United, everyone. If you are new to the channel and you do like these detailed updates on the tropics, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social social media. So the latest National Hurricane Center keeps this at 115 miles an hour, moving to the north-northwest at 8 miles an hour as of the 5 o'clock advisory. There is still hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings for the Turks and Caicos Islands, and there is now a tropical storm watch issued for Bermuda. This will likely get upgraded to a tropical storm warning or a hurricane warning in days to come as the details become better refined, and this will be a major hurricane, a category four hurricane passing very close to Bermuda. So this is going to bring substantial impacts I'm concerned about if you're on Bermuda. And so you need to take this seriously already because we're continuing with um, a system that is going to get very dangerously close to the small island of Bermuda in the next two to three days. So heavy rains around the center of Fiona will continue to impact the Turks and Caicos Islands through this evening with continued life-threatening flooding. Localized additional flooding and urban flooding is also possible still in the Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. And again, big key point here, and I'm just going to skip through this to number four. Fiona is expected to affect portions of the Atlantic Canada as a powerful hurricane force extratropical cyclone late Friday into Saturday. All right, so keep that in mind. And also, again, like I said, tropical storm conditions are possible on Bermuda by late Thursday. And again, if the models continue to do what they don't want to do, that means remain consistent. We could see, again, hurricane watches or even hurricane warnings issued in the next day or so on Bermuda. So now, as far as the intensity goes, this is the latest from the National Hurricane Center, and we can see that the initial intensity is 115 miles an hour in 12 hours. It's going to become a category, well, it's a category three now, but it's going to become a high-end category three, and then in 24 hours, a category four hurricane, and then in 48 hours, possibly peaking and plateauing at 140 miles an hour. That's a mid-grade Category 4, and then weakening should commence thereafter, but it is going to be a very, very powerful uh, post-tropical extra tropical cyclone when it hits the Canadian region and I mean very strong pressures that are very low um, as it does its extra tropical transition like it typically does when it gets into the northern latitudes and it gets into the westerlies typically. So as far as the GFS model goes we can clearly see with what we are dealing with here this is um, pretty concerning then we're going to talk about Invest 98L because that is on our uh, on our dinner plate to really watch closely. So I'm just going to roll through this very quickly and we can see in 60 hours it is at 945 millibars and then by the time three days comes around by Friday morning it is passing very close to Bermuda and I mean I'm going to put this in a black dot so you can all see where Bermuda is in relation to the system. That is very close. That will bring tropical storm force or even hurricane force winds on the island of Bermuda Friday morning and then that moves out and impacts Canada eventually as a very powerful extratropical cyclone and when we take a look at our Atlantic wide view let's take a look at that very quickly here um, since people in Canada are probably watching this 928 millibars in about four days that is very deep extratropical cyclone impacting near Nova Scotia I'm sure there will be serious wind damage serious flood problems and uh, also coastal flooding, beach erosion, storm surge. Yes, you name it. It's going to be a very powerful system when it gets up there in about uh, three to five days. Now, the rest of this video will be focused on Invest 98L that has a huge potential right now. And I mean a big potential of becoming our next depression in the next three to five days. And I'm not saying this very lightly. It is supported by the European model, by the GFS, the Canadian, and even the ICON model. All of the reliable global model guidance does indicate that this has a pretty big potential of becoming something 
pretty big um, in the next um, seven to eight days. But we're not going to go that far out, right? Because we want to make sure we are providing the most reliable weather information as detailed, as accurate as we can possible. We're not here for the hype. We're not here to um, kind of scare the public because you know how that can be sometimes. So looking at um, Invest 98L, we can see that convection has become slightly better organized since this morning, not as blobbier. And it is also showing signs at the surface that we might be starting to see a more sharper trough. So we have winds that are coming in out of the south, wrapping around this wave envelope. And it's the northern flank of this wave that might be able to focus that vorticity and spin. And we might be able to get a consolidation of a closed surface low by the time it gets into the southern windward islands. And again, that's if the deep convection can um, able to continue. There's not much arcing bands, but well to the north of it, we have some uh, convective collapses going on. But the dry air does not look to play a role at preventing this thing from forming, nor is a shear. Except we do have a little bit of northerly shear on the system, but that too will abate as soon as this gets into the Caribbean. Not right away, but probably in about four or five days, we expect things to kind of lighten up quite a bit. So here's a look at the latest NHC um, as far as their areas to watch. And of course, we are all interested in, in this down here that has a 70% chance. If we go back to their interactive page, we can see what it looks like. There is an 80% chance of tropical formation on this system. Okay, an 80%. Yesterday, when I made a video on this, it was just at a 10% chance of tropical formation. So what a huge increase in their probabilities with this. So this now seems pretty likely. We're also going to uh, be seeing Hermine if it gets named. I don't like pre-naming, but uh, there's a lot of model guidance support that it's probably going to become something, an entity that is going to impact someone. Besides naming storms, we have Gaston right now that just got named by the NHC this morning too. It was not even a tropical depression. And I mean early this morning at like two or three in the morning. So it's already got its name. Um, that's already our eighth name storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. And we could be looking at our ninth name storm possible in the next 10 days. So keep that in mind. Very active Atlantic right now as expected in mid-September. So now we're going to get back into the GFS model and we're going to be focusing on our invest. Don't worry about um, Fiona or Gaston. We talked about Fiona, but we're also not going to be talking about Gaston because it's, or Gaston, it, as it's in the middle of nowhere. So it's not going to be um, impacting anyone anytime soon just yet. So in the next 48 hours, we could see there is invest 98L impacting the southern windward islands. Heavy rain, strong winds, thunderstorms, squally inclement weather, you name it, it's going to be rough down there as this passes to your south if you're in Guadalupe and it passes over Trinidad and Tobago, if you're in Barbuda, if you're in St. Nitz and Nevis, if you are on some of those islands, this is for you. You're expecting some inclement weather. Now, the system struggles on the GFS. In the next three days, it doesn't do much, okay? It, in fact, probably weakens a little bit. And that's because of a little bit of the shear in the remnants or what is major hurricane Fiona at this point. There's going to be outflow and you'll see this on the upper level wind pattern forecast on the GFS. And then by the time we go into day five, it still hasn't strengthened very much. So we might be teetering between a tropical depression or a tropical storm or just a simple very strong invest or a, in other words, a PTC that we call potential tropical cyclone. So it's going to be flirting in that category. We're not talking about substantial development um, in the next five days, but we are going to see at least some organization or attempt at getting something going. Now, I don't like going very far out, but I'm only going to stop here. This is day five. This is day six. I'm only going out to day six, and that's the furthest I'm even going to touch soil on that. 977 millibars potentially by Monday morning. Now, the GFS, the previous runs have been kind of flirting with this 968, 957, 977. This is more of the weaker uh, output of the GFS of the 12Z runs. So we'll just have to wait and see 
if this stays consistent or if this is weaker on the next run, but all you need to know is we're not anticipating any substantial significant development in the next five days. Anything beyond that is for weather people, weather weenies, weather super confident people to take part into thinking that maybe I'm confident this is going to become a major hurricane. In relation, it's we don't know. We just don't know. So the European model has a different scenario, and this is kind of the ceiling of things. The GFS is more bullish with the forecast, while the European model in its first five days really doesn't show much at all through Sunday. Only a very weak tropical depression or a simple invest. Nothing substantial on this model. And then if we go all the way out to Monday morning, um, that is, let me make sure I'm right. Yeah, Monday morning, we're talking about maybe a low and tropical storm with maybe 35 to 40 mile an hour winds. Probably the extent of that. And so the European probably on to something. It's been consistently showing this a lot weaker than all of the other models. You know how the European could end up being. So the reason why the GFS model does not show significant development in the next five days is because we have this outflow, this what we call curved back returning flow from, um, we have Fiona right here, expelling its outflow coming out of the north and wrapping around. So your system is back in here in the belt of easterly and northeasterly flow aloft, and that's going to impart that shear. And so when we go into uh, day three here, the system really struggles because it's under the influence of this northeasterly returning flow in the remnants of or what is left with major Hurricane Fiona right here with that return flow. You got also a trough here that's going to enhance that. But as soon as we get into day five, we can see that flow does back off. And now we got um, the invest here that is more tucked underneath this weaker flow pattern aloft. And when that happens, we usually see a uh, organizing system and it usually forebodes uh, more faster or uh, strengthening with the system in that five day period. And when we go a little further out, we can see the outflow expands underneath this subtropical ridge that is over the system. So yeah, we gotta watch this, all right? But at least we got the shear, we got some dry air to contend with at least over the next four to five days that will prevent this from explosively organizing into something significant by the time it reaches the Eastern Caribbean. There will be a cap on this until the five day mark passes. Our track forecast is highly dependent on how organized and how um, strong um, Invest 98L can be. So some of the models that show this a little stronger might make it go a little further north while some of the weaker models of the intensity show it going further south like Aruba, maybe some portions of Venezuela Something, again, to keep in mind over the next five days is strength depends on track in this case because, again, a stronger system will likely move more northward than, say, more kind of southward. Now, looking at the intensity forecast, again, there's a huge ceiling on this, and I want everyone to really pay close attention to this. We're not going to jump the gun and say, oh, it's going to be a Category 4 because the COTI model shows it. No, we're looking at our ensembles, we're looking at the spaghetti plot here, and there's a huge ceiling on this. Five days, possibly barely a tropical storm on the CMC model, which is a Canadian run, versus the COTI model that is on the higher end of the guidance, indicates a category four in five days. So there is ex ex um, uh, exceptional uncertainties and ceilings on this. Very high end and bullish, versus a low and conservative forecast down here. Therefore, my intensity forecast is really not calling this to become anything significant in the next five days, possibly at the very most, a 40 mile an hour tropical storm in five days. And again, maybe, slim chance that even happens. So keep that in mind. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.